OK, so when I'm looking at this problem, what we have is f of x equals negative log base 6 of x plus 2. The first thing, anytime I'm seeing a pair, anytime I'm seeing a graph with transformations, the first thing I always like to do, it doesn't matter if I'm using a calculator or not a calculator, is I'm just going to say, I'm going to look at these reflections. I'm multiplying my function by negative 1, so I know there's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. And I know that also I'm adding a 2 inside the function, so therefore that's going to shift my function two units to the left. All right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to be looking into is go ahead and determine what the parent graph is always going to look like. And we have to understand when we're graphing these to be looking for our parent graph. All right. So if I, and you don't have to draw the parent graph, but a lot of times I would just like to explain this just to make sure we understand how everything's going to go. The parent graph for a logarithmic equation just looks like that. y equals log base b of x. That's just what the parent graph looks like. All right. And we know that the parent graph has the point 1, 0. So when I'm applying my transformations, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change how these transformations are going to affect my graph. Right? So if this says to shift my, two, my um, graph two units to the left, I am going to take this graph, this point 1, 0, and shift it over two units to the left. So instead of being at the point 1, 0, Kyle, it's now going to be at the point negative 1, 0. So all I'm doing is just moving this point two units to the left. So my new graph is now going to contain a point negative 1, 0. It's going to look exactly the same, right? But now all I did was I shifted it two units to the left. The last step is I have a reflection over the um, y-axis, x-axis. So therefore, I'm going to take the graph, and I'm going to flip it. So therefore, my graph is going to now look something like this. All right. Now, the important thing to understand is where our asymptote is. Our asymptote was previously at 0. So if I've shifted the graph over 2 units, where's my new asymptote? Negative 2. So when drawing my graph, I'm going, if I have an asymptote that's not in my axis or it's changed, I'm going to write in my asymptote. So now, let's go ahead and write in what the domain and range is. For our parent graph, we know the domain is from 0 to infinity, where the range is from negative infinity to infinity. Well, over here, now the farthest left that my graph is going to go is negative 2. So my domain is at negative 2 infinity. My range is unchanged. All right? there's, no, there's no restriction on the output value going to positive infinity or negative infinity. So that's going to still be negative infinity to infinity. Then when I deal with the asymptote, asymptote's at x equals 0. Well, I shifted the graph two units to the left. So now my asymptote equals negative 2. And this is at negative 1, 0. All right. Now, again, if we wanted to look at um, plotting a point, yes? Is the paragraph always going to be at 1, 0? No. Yes, unless there is anything that's going to be multiplied by it. Like, unless it's, um, when we have y equals log base b of x, that's correct. But if I have y equals a times log base b of x, that a will affect the, the y-intercept or the x-intercept. Okay? So if you do have a number, let's say instead of this, it's maybe multiplied by 3, then you'd want to make sure you graph what 3 log base b of x would be, because that's going to change now, because now your y-intercept would be at 3, because that 3 is going to change what the x-intercept would be. Okay? Um, so ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, your asymptote domain range and your graph looking up there. The other thing also to go through is, again, you guys can even look at this and look at another point. And this is exactly what we go through 
if I look at y equals log base 6 of x without any transformations, let's go and see if we can determine another point. right? And if you guys look at this, you could say, rewrite this in exponential form, 6 to the y equals x. right? We already know that um, if I did an xy table, and this is something you guys could use with a calculator or not, but we already know when, at, when y equals 0, x equals what? y equals 0. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a negative. So let's keep that negative there. 6 to the equals negative x. Sorry. Transformations with the, keeping the reflection, not at least the thing. But we know without our transformation here, when, OK, um, hold on. We don't need to write that. We can re write, write it without. You can do that, but let's just keep it without the reflection, because I'll show you what to do. Here's going back to your parent graph. We know when 6 equals 0, or when y equals 0, x equals 1, right? So Garrison, going back to what your question was, you know, how does it always look? Just make a table with your parent function. If there was a 3 here, you'd want to change it. And then if y equaled 1, we know that x would equal 6. So at 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up there, right? Now, if I was going to go and graph this, I'm still going to shift this over 2 and then reflect over. So now it's going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, down, um, down 1. So really, the graph goes something like that. It's much 4, comma, negative 1. Okay. So when graphing, so what I did is I graphed the parent function. I found points for my parent function. And then what I did is I applied the transformations to find my two points. You can also use the table feature in your um, graphing calculator. I don't have a problem with that. But I do want you to provide me at least two points that are going to be on the graph. OK? And I think the easiest one is first applying the x and the y-intercept from there. Make sense?